Hey guys, three in the morning. I'm in Penn on Penn. This is my first ride out of my first real ride. Oh, real real ride here. I set out at a quarter after three in the morning. Right now it's just turning four. And oh boy, I had a scare. I was riding d down some sort of major roads in the city, and I saw a lot of motorbikes. Not too many. It's three in the morning, you know. But I saw this bike with a couple of kids on it, and they looked over, and I could see they were scoping me out. Then uh, my Google map took me off on a side route down some uh, like little little local roads, like, like these kind of roads. And so I started winding my way down, getting myself sort of trapped in this network of suspicious roads. All of a sudden I see these kids drive up again. Two kids, one driver, one on the back. And uh, they drive by once and then they come by again. I see them in my side view mirror and my iPhone is right here. And they uh, just, just blatantly reached for my iPhone and they got it. I was able to swat them and they weren't able to get it. I swerved out, I gave them a, I gave them a nudge and then uh, <laughs> I, I flicked them off and they turned around, the guy in the back seat turned around, flicked me off again and I kind of thought that was the end of it but he had a taste and they started hunting me and uh, then I started getting nervous because I kept seeing them and these roads were really really potholy and bumpy so I couldn't really get a lot of speed out of it and I was starting to get afraid as a matter of fact you can see I'm holding my camera in a weird way I'm not sure where they where they are hold on I need to know the uh, police number for uh, for Cambodia. I wonder what the number is. Of course, I don't know. Would they care about me? They wouldn't even be able to understand what I had to say. But I was ready to call the police. My heart was racing. Then I started thinking, shit, what if they have like a knife? Or what if they're a team, you know? What if they're like a crew of a couple of bikes, three, four bikes of two? And then what, you know? I think I'm in the clear now, actually. I'm kind of riding out of the city. But that was the first time I've been faced with a mugger and then been hunted after the fact. Spooky. Um, they came up on me and then they came up on me again. And I kept having to swerve down side roads. They were looking for me. I pulled behind a car in like a little apartment complex and I hid there. Well, they drove past like right out of a movie. But. This was no movie. I'm gonna have to watch my stuff here more than other places, I guess. Welcome to Cambodia riding. Well, I think probably Phnom Penh is not exactly the most uh, safe place to ride early in the morning. I think these main roads I'm on now are, are much better. A little bit later in the day, six o'clock in the morning to be exact. I'm tired. There's a lot of trucks full of people going into the city. <clears throat> that truck is full of people, just to the rafters, like convoys and convoys. Hello, convoys and convoys of them. They must be going into Phnom Penh to work or something. I don't know, factory workers or something. So many. Hello! Nice to be around some nice people instead of thieves and robbers. That van's full of people. That thing's full of people. That's oh, a bus. 
That truck's full of people. 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 Hello. Lots of people going somewhere. That truck's full of people. 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 I think that's a funeral. <clears throat> funeral. Interesting. That truck's full of people. <laughs> so many people. I realize it's sort of a morbid thought, but seeing all these cars full of people, these trucks full and full and loaded with people, makes me think about. Uh, the Cambodian genocide, you know, that I was at the museum yesterday. They emptied Pen on Pen and sent all of the intellectuals and everybody out of the city. And uh, I was like, how did they do that? How would they dump a city of a million and a half people? Sort of like that. Bombs are coming from America. We better get out. Here's some trucks. Get in. Let's go. You know, they don't know. Happy faces, they think, you know, oh, thank God we got to evacuate our city because, you know, no bombs, but in essence, they were being uh, evac e evicted, not uh, liberated. Hey guys, I am uh, in my hotel room. I got in uh, pretty early. I finished my riding before 10 o'clock and uh, I'm about 75 kilometers away from uh, Phnom Penh, a um, uh, little hotel. Uh, been a little bit unlucky <laughs> today and uh, yesterday being kind of in a down mood, uh, today made today even worse I guess. Um, it was uh, freaky. I mean the um, I don't know if I can put into words what it was like with those guys because I was in such narrow alleyways that were dimly lit. The roads were so potholy that I couldn't get enough speed to just book out of there. And I was stuck like a, like a rat in a maze. And uh, I was being pursued by these guys. <laughs> I was not thinking about recording the uh, the pursuit. I was simply trying to worry about self-preservation. I kept having not these images of backup coming and a bunch of kids with knives and weapons uh, pursuing me and backing me in. and there was a bunch of times I ran into a dead end and I had to turn around and it was black and I was listening for the motorbike and I was you know just sort of uber aware because if they would have caught me at some of these dead end roads oh, I would have been totally screwed and I don't know what would have happened. Uh, actually the reason there was dead ends because there was like weddings that took up entire streets and uh, I mean I was blocked so like these wedding tents not active weddings at 3 in the morning but they had the wedding tents set up so I had to turn around and, and back out I feel um, like my opinion of, of Cambodia is <laughs> and I apologize to anybody in this uh, community that is in Cambodia Travel is subjective and um, I could just as easily have met more amazing people here and seen more amazing things that, that were like more in tune with what I love and had a completely different experience. It's all subjective and so far it's just been really a downer. Uh, obviously meeting Chris has been amazing and there have been some amazing highs. Angkor Wat was amazing. It's just I'm hoping that uh, in the next, I think I, I should be in Cambodia for the next five days. I'm hoping that the next five days reveal themselves to be uh, better than uh, today and uh, better than mood-wise.
forth for the future. I'm contemplating, it's almost seven o'clock, which means I should probably go to bed if I wanna start out early. I'm, I think that the reason I had that experience was that I was in a, the biggest city in Cambodia, very densely po uh, populated, and I started a little bit too early. Maybe starting at three o'clock was a little bit too early. There were still some ruffians out from the previous night and uh, they were riding around. I think around four o'clock, they're probably going to bed. Um, and uh, in this part of town, more rural is more to my benefit. Um, I'm not gonna get myself involved in any of these crazy experiences if I'm out here. I, I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to give Cambodia its, its, its due and uh, there's some things I really like about it. I like, you know, the fact that you can use American money, but uh, on the other side, it's weird because I know American money, so the, the, when they say it's, this coffee's three dollars, I'm like, three dollars for a coffee seems expensive. And like in another form of currency, the equivalent would be like, you know, 30,000 dong. I don't really have a complete understanding of that equaling three dollars. So when they say 30 to 30,000 dong, oh, no, 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 no problem, you know, but three dollars is three dollars. I, I haven't really had to equate to uh, American dollars outside of America and right now I'm like, oh, that is that, is that kind of expensive? <laughs> I just feel like I'm having weird interactions with people too. I, I had lunch, dinner, lunch today um, outside just down the street and this guy was just, I, am, I, am, I consider myself pretty good at communicating with people on a, um, on a non-verbal a way. Uh, I have a lot of like, I can use fingers, I can like make sounds, I can, I can show phone and do translations. And I went to this place, it was not a very healthy place, it was like bread and these little, little uh, meatballs or fish balls or something. And he deep fried them, but it put something in my belly and I'll be good enough for tonight. But I, I finished my meal, I went up to him and I said, baby cockroaches in my bed. I wonder how many baby cockroaches there are in my bed. Beyond the baby cockroaches, this place is quite comfortable. Anyways, I went up to him and I said, um, how much, you know, it's very universal. This and this is money and the bill, you know. He was, you know, he, and he, he enunciated in Khmer how much. I said, I'm sorry, I don't understand. How much? One, two, three, four, five? And he said it again in Khmer, the amount, which I couldn't understand. I, I said, like, maybe he's trying to tell me in larger amounts, like the, or, Khmer does have their own, I mean, Cambodia does have their own currency. It's just more, more or less they use American dollars. So I, I held up a calculator on my phone you know, I put my phone up and I put the calculator and I showed it to him. It was like one, two, three on the calculator. One, two, three, you just type, show me. He just went, he just went blank. How do you not understand to just what one and two and numbers are? Do you not really understand what one and two and numbers are? He was a, he was a early twenties kid, I guess, maybe late teenager. And I mean, he was just completely dumbfounded so then he walks into the uh, main restaurant area, and not rest, it was just like a little roadside thing, and there was a guy there who just happened to be drinking a coffee, and he starts talking to him in, in the, in, you know, in Khmer, and uh, um, <laughs> the guy's like, uh, can I help you? And I said, I just want to know how much the bill is. Oh, and he says, oh, and he talks to the guy, it's three dollars. It's like three. How many ways can you enunciate or explain the number three? You can do it this way, you can do it this way, you can do it this way, you could punch the three on my calculator. You could have done any number of things and I would have gotten the message across. But it just just today has been I don't know, it's just crazy. Uh anyway, it's just just a weird day. <laughs> weird day in Cambodia. Anyways, but I'm safe. I'm in the hotel and other than that baby cockroaches on my bed, 
no worse for wear. So take it easy guys, I will talk to you later. Um, I didn't film a lot on the road. Uh, my mind was a little bit uh, tweaked from the morning, so uh, hopefully no more of that. Take it easy guys, I'll see you later, bye.